since I left Ferguson Retirement in 2013, Man United has gone from regularly winning the Premier League title and challenging in Champions League to now barely making top four and absolutely shit in the Champions League. How did that happen? We are here to talk about how to fix Manchester United. Is that possible? The most common thing you find about clubs who are competing and winning trophies right now is that they all have owners who are ready to win, who are hungry for success. You have Man City, you have Liverpool, you have Real Madrid. These clubs have owners that care about success because they know that when you are successful, you'll be good financially. So they put more emphasis on being successful in the pitch because success brings you more money. But we have Glazers who care about making more money and don't really give a shit about success on the pitch. We're not here to talk about the Glazers, but we're here to talk about the Ineos group who have come in to fix Manchester United. And how do they do that? How exactly do they fix Manchester United? But one question we ask before that is, would the Glazers allow them to fix the club? Would the Glazers allow them to make the right decisions? And of course, still, do Ineos know the right decision to make? Are Ineos capable of managing this club? We know that Ineos have managed, have been managing Nice. They still manage Nice in the French, the French league, but haven't done anything so great there. So the Maclef has been managing Nice for some years now and hasn't turned up the world upside down. The Ines, Nice, by comparison, having, haven't been doing so well, but he has managed them, managing them for years, but he's going to come into the Premier League and manage Manchester United. First things first. What did the Glazers care about? Making money. Would they allow the Ineos group to make some certain decision, decisions? Would they allow them to sell these some certain players? Would they allow them to really sweep that club off its feet and make some good decisions? That is what we don't know yet. We're not certain of that. We all know that the Ineos group run the football side of the, of the club, but the Glazers are still the majority owners of this club, meaning any most decisions the Ineos would like to make, the Glazers still have to be form, informed about it. The Glazers still have to agree about it. Because I don't think after running the club by themselves for almost 17 years, they're going to sit back and allow Ineos to do everything. I very much doubt that. But then, in a scenario whereby the, Ineos, the Glazers allow the Ineos group to run this club um, by themselves, can the Ineos group really run this club? Ineos group have been running the club since January, and up to now, there are some certain decisions that haven't been made and um, haven't been made yet. And there are still slow progress in terms of them revamping the club. So it still feels like the Glazers are in charge because we have had the Nash Watts negotiations going on for weeks. And that's how the Glazers run their operations. Negotiations are always very long and always tiring. Right here, right, right, right now, I'm tired of the, the Nash Watts situation. It's probably not going to come um, till after the summer transfer window, which it still feels like the Glazers are the ones slowing down the process because they don't want to pay too much money for him, which I understand. But getting the right people in right now will save us so much money in terms of won't be overspending too much money um, like we, we always do in, in the tra- in so much as far window. So if the success are going to come to United, first of all, we have to have Ineos group who are ready who are ready to win, who are hungry for success. We have to have Ineos group who are ready to make the right decisions for us to succeed. And the next thing also is about appointing the right people to do the job for them. Sergeant Macleave, David Bresford, Plong, they all do not have the experience at running the club. So that's why they have to employ people. Or my brother is going to be in the CEO. Dana Schwartz, who's going to be the, the sporting director. Jason Wilcox, who's going to be the technical director. They have to employ these people who are qualified enough to run this club. And of course, what happens? If Omar my brother, after five years at the club, we still haven't have any, had any success. After five years of Dana Schwartz, no success. What do they do? They sack these players and get in fresh people who have better ideas to give us success. So in terms of fixing this club, the right manager, management have to be in place for there to be any form of success. The right management from the CEO, from the technical director, the sporting director, to the recruitment and scouting, to the manager. Everything has to be on point for us to achieve any form of success at this club. So the next thing is, with the Indians group, make these decisions. Because proper management equals right decisions and over time, you know, many right decisions equals success. Look at um, Liverpool, look at Real Madrid, look at Man City and check their uh, top management running the, those clubs, world class. They are doing very well. They know how to achieve success and they get it done. So we are going from Ed Woodward, um, Richard Arnold, John Mortar, 
to Omar Berada, Jason Wilcox, and Dana Schwartz, which is good. But do these guys really know how to get us success? We will know that we will see that happen um, over time. And the thing is, if these guys are not able to give us this success, be ready to change. Be ready to make change. So this also falls down to Ineos group um, to, you know, be ready, be, always be ready to make the right decisions. Always be ready to make the right decisions. And then in terms of making the right decisions, the, the one of the main appointments that equals success comes down to the manager. Right here, right now, we have Ten Hag. And the question like in, in everybody's mind is, should Ten Hag be sacked? Should, should he should he be should he, should he be given one more year to you know to see how he progresses under the right structure? Right here, right now, I don't think there is any wow option that we can get to be our new um manager because now in the trans in, my, in the manager scene we have lots of club wanting a new manager. We have um, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, um Liverpool, and then United. And being how poor we have been over the years. These other clubs will probably get a manager way better than a. If the, if these other clubs come to a manager and offer them a job, those managers will probably go to other, other those other clubs for coming to us because we have been shit for how many years. And you know, if 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 a Liverpool, if a Liverpool comes to you, if a if a Barcelona comes to you, if a Man comes to you, those are way more attractive than coming to Manchester United. And that is the truth. So why not why not stick to Ten Hag? Understand that. At the end of the day, is a decision to make. If they decide to start Ten Hag, they shouldn't get in someone as stupid as a Potter or a Southgate that are being linked to us right now. If if you start Ten Hag, be ready to get in someone who is on his level or someone way better than him with more experience. Not a Potter and a Southgate that have one basically nothing and haven't tasted success in their entire life. At least Ten Hag has been in the Eredivisie and has won, you know. Titles over there and has done very well in the Champions League. What is what is Potter and Southgate's experience um, at you know managing players and winning and winning and trophies? Um, and the one funny funny thing is Southgate hasn't even managed international players in his life before. So I wonder how he's going to go from managing the, the um, English national team to managing a club filled with lots of international players from different parts of the world. So that also fall that that also falls down to the inner good to make the decision. Who is going to be the right manager to play a certain kind of way? How, why, how is our philosophy going to be like? How are we going to play like? What kind of players are we going to be signing? Are we signing young, talented players and, and not showing them to be world stars? Are we signing already made players and, you know, winning trophies now and uh, immediately? And then when deciding how to sign your players, you then decide what kind of player do you want to sign? And that comes down to the mentality of the players. And, you know, those Discovery are done by the recruitment team and the scouting team. We check the players we have right now are just egotistical players, players that only care about themselves, players that don't want to play as part of a larger team. They only, they only view themselves as it is me. I'm going to cut in. I'm going to shoot. I'm not going to pass. I'm going to try that long range shot and not pass. We have so many players like that, and we need to, you know, change. Look at Man City. Look at Liverpool. You get these people passing the ball around themselves for, you know, trying out chances. For United, one person gets a shot, tries to cut in, boom, takes a shot. One person gets the ball, tries to shoot um, from 30 yard, uh, yards away, which does not work. We have also players that only come to the club because we are going to pay them so much money. And of course, we are stupid enough to offer so much money. So these players come and, and their mentality isn't, I am hungry for success. I want to win at United. Their own concern is, United has paid me so much money. I love playing here because the money is so good and I'm going to give my best to United. That's way different from getting those players that come in and be like, yeah, this club hasn't won titles in a year. I love my United. I'm here for to win. I'm here to play in the biggest club in the world and win titles together. We together with everybody, with the fans and everybody. But we don't get that. We get players that are here to make so much money out of the club and that is just it. So if you want to build a successful team, you need to, first of all, allow the Ineos group to full control of the club. In terms of the sporting decision, the Ineos group have been, the players have been useless. So for us to fix this club, we need the right people at the club to make the right decisions and give us, to bring in the right players, the right coaches, the right manager and give us success over time. That's the only way I see success at this club. It starts with the Ineos group making the right decisions 
getting the right people in. If those people are not the right ones over time, you change them. But getting the right people in, first things first, those people getting the right scouting and recruitment done, and then um getting the right manager to play a certain system agreed by everybody, then giving that manager the right players or the right mentality of players for him, and then he built he built the uh, that team the, that team together, and then. If there's any issue with players leaving, you sell players, bring in more players. You never leave the manager like in terms of recruitment. You always adhere for him to give him the right players he wants. And over time, success come about. Look at Ateta at that's now. He came in, flushed away how many players away. He has been getting new players over time. And now I've seen them playing very well. Um, Jürgen Klopp has been at Liverpool for nine years. When he first came in, they were not that good. It took him some years to get his team, the right team, and he started performing well. And he also came in flush, 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 bringing, 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 and now they are so good. Same thing with Man City. Man City always, you know, makes good decisions, signing good players, sell players when they, when it's time for them to go, and it just gels because they are bringing in good players, selling players, bringing good players, selling players, and over time they win. They win. So that is the only way we can fix United because this club is in dire need of a solu- a dire need of success. We are a sleeping giant and we don't deserve to be where we are. But fortunately, it's very exhausting to be a United fan because right here, right now, we are in that same situation of it's time for Ten Hag to go. Many people want him to leave, and but it's high time we stick to a manager and give him that extra year with the right tools and see what happens, or else, or else, or else who might be unfixable under this kind of management. If it was a total 100% takeover of the club, it would have been more better than this, what we have now. But we have what we have, and we can't do anything about it. So what do we do? We move forward with it. But if the Ineos are serious about making change, about competing, it all comes down first of all to the Glazers to allow them to do what they want to do, and then it comes down to them to make the right decisions. Right decisions done over time equals success.